So this is the story of how I became a German citizen without ever having lived in Germany or be able to speak the language. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. A lot have asked me where I'm from and I feel like I finally need to come clean about this. After the flag videos, a lot of people have sent me their flags and proudly let me know about their countries. It's awesome how nice people all over the world are. But some Germans also happily began sending me local flags with descriptions of the country, thinking they were teaching a foreigner about them. For example, Lars kindly sent the flag of the German city of Cuxhaven. Ren Renne just wanted to share some German culture with these German colored socks. And it makes me feel like a liar, a complete phony. Because actually, I'm just one of you. I'm legally German. One morning when eating my gummy beers with sauerkraut and weiss beer, I decided I finally need to explain why. So let's go a bit back. I grew up as a Danish boy in Denmark, speaking Danish. I never lived in Germany, but I did of course visit a couple of times. For example, when going camping in France with my family, we drove through Germany. Or when going skiing in Austria, Germany was quite convenient to drive through. Or when I visited the Czech Republic, I drove through Germany. Apart from Danish, I was taught English in school, which was cool because I became able to understand what they were saying in movies, songs and video games. Later, when I was 13 to 15 years old, German was also introduced in school. It seemed less useful compared to English and I hated it. Instead of just one word for the, German had for no reason made three different words for it. Der, die, das. Just to be sure you were wrong 67% of the time. If that wasn't bad enough, just to be sure you were wrong virtually all the time, these words were again split into a million other words. Just to make it even harder. And if my old German teacher is watching this, really no offense to her, she actually cared a lot and really tried making me learn. But at this point I already felt so deeply violated in being forced to learn this crazy mess of a language that I didn't pay any attention at all. As soon as it became possible, I switched to Spanish instead of course, and thought this would be my last encounter with German. In June 2014, I visited a campsite in Croatia with my family. There were a lot of Germans there and they seemed to share a community. This was during the World Cup and as Germany kept winning matches, the German team kept getting more and more attention. The games were shown at most restaurants and were loudly cheered on. Specifically, there were always two drunk German guys my age who were obnoxious and loud. I must admit, I hoped Brazil would beat Germany in the semi-finals, since I didn't like these two particular guys. I had no real connection to Brazil, I was simply just a hater, because of two random guys. Anyway, as many probably know, I bet on the wrong horse. Brazil didn't win, Germany did. 7-1. So decisively that a few certain websites actually had to request people to stop uploading match under public humiliation. That night there was an incredible atmosphere where all the Germans were, and I could only look with envious eyes at them. A couple of years later, when planning the China road trip, we were applying for visas. I noticed Kazakhstan and Mongolia required me, as a Danish citizen, to obtain visas in advance, whereas the Germans could just come and go as they wanted. I was truly jealous of these pesky Germans, with all their travel freedom and victories in football. But if you can't beat them, join them. How hard would it be to become German? I had some family from there, which might help my case. But would I have to move to Germany? Would I have to pass some sort of test? Were there any chances at all? Well, the road trip was in a few days at this point not enough time to become German, so I sort of just forgot. And a year passed. But then I remembered the idea. Before proceeding, I had to know if Germany had any mandatory military service. A lot of countries still have it, and this project would be beyond stupid if I were to end up enrolled in the military and have to go fight somewhere for Germany, as it doesn't always end well. Luckily, Germany already abolished conscription. Next step was figuring out how to actually become legally German. Turns out there's quite a lot of things needed. Living there for 8 years, where my longest stay at once in Germany had been 3 weeks. So if the government was willing to accept that, I'd just need 7 years, 11 months and a week extra. Commitment to the free and democratic constitutional system? I guess I'm cool with that. Possesses an adequate knowledge of the German language? I don't know if my years of not paying attention in German class would help me here. Have legal capacity or legal representative? I don't even know what that means, so I'm probably good there. And even examination. Altogether, it seemed impossible. The other options also didn't seem applicable to me. I wasn't born there, and I couldn't really claim to be a victim of Nazi persecution. But how about by descent? 
Turns out if there's just a straight line of German is, and nobody in the family has renounced it, you might be German as well. There are of course some exceptions, such as before 1975, apparently you could only inherit citizenship from your father, but after that year German mothers were also considered as German as German fathers. I went to the German embassy just to be sure and to figure it all out. I told them about my family and the helpful bureaucrat said my case was very easy. There was no need for a lengthy process, I would just need to write a few documents and then I could apply for a German passport straight away. From the German government's perspective, I had always been German since birth. I had just gone under the radar and never been registered. Well, walking from the embassy was a pretty weird feeling. There was no sneakiness or anything. Seemingly, I was just German all of a sudden. Though I didn't have a passport yet, I decided to take my Germanness very seriously. I went to the supermarket and bought all the sauerkraut, and though I'm really not into the musical style of Rammstein, I forced myself to listen to 15 minutes every day, since it seemed pretty German. I still didn't speak German, but that would probably come along with the passport. I booked an appointment at the embassy's so-called burger service, and I must admit I was quite disappointed. It was not what the name suggested. Anyway, I applied for my passport and waited a few weeks, where I only watched movies dubbed in German, before I went back to the embassy to get my passport. My first joke at the embassy as soon as I got it in my hand was if I was now entitled to any money or payment from the German government. It was unfortunately not appreciated. On my way home, now as an official German, I had so many questions. Who was the German version of Shakira? Should I like Swiss people? I quickly began feeling very German. I had a sudden and unexplained urge to be very punctual and less funny. And a strong desire to open Europe's borders and have a more integrated European Union. Before I had never really liked sauerkraut, I actually found it a bit off-putting, but now I had a hunger specifically for it. I invited a couple of friends, got a few flags and balloons and held a German dinner party on my first night as a documented German. The menu was Wiener Schnitzel mit Sauerkraut, though the name suggested might have been more Austrian actually. I noticed that I still wasn't able to speak German or like sauerkraut, but that would probably come any day now. I must say, it was a nice feeling to know I could move to Germany and immediately be entitled to voting rights and help to choose the future of the country. A few days later, I was actually so lucky that I had a Leo in Frankfurt airport for a couple of hours, where I found an appropriate German outfit for the occasion of being in Germany for the first time as an official German. Though the Schengen area is practical without border checks, on this day as I walked through the airport, I wanted to show my passport. So instead I showed it to every person I interacted with, whether they wanted to see it or not. I happily exclaimed I was German, but it was not such an impressive thing in Germany since apparently a lot of people are German there. Not a lot changed after I became German. Sure, my roommates began finding a lot of sauerkraut in weird places all over the apartment, but mostly life was pretty normal. I appreciated the passport as a symbol of being German, and I would keep it forever. Though I did lose it a couple of months later. As thing unfortunately goes, I was taking a bus in Honduras when five armed robbers entered and stole everything. To be honest, in this situation having two passports were incredibly helpful, since I could travel onward with my Danish passport I had kept hidden in my shoe without being stuck. Just a quick heads up, if you now meet somebody with my name and a German passport in Honduras, it's probably identity theft, so don't trust them. When I got back, I was once again just Danish. A new passport would cost me 58 euros and 50 cents, a significant sum. But then again, I had already had a taste of the joy of being German, so I decided to get a new one. A few months later, there was an official soccer match between Denmark and Germany. I took this as the real test of which country I should belong to. I went to see it with my friend Mass, and though we represented opposing countries all of a sudden, we tried to remain friends. Before the game, I even practiced the German national anthem at home so I'd be able to sing it along. At 18 minutes in, Denmark actually got the first goal. So I took off the stupid German jersey and immediately began rooting for Denmark instead. But then Germany also got a goal, and I was back on their side. In the end, it ended 1-1, so I kept both countries with me. I must admit, when people asked me what I was, I would still say Danish, as I felt like a bit of a faker when it came to being German. At one point I traveled to Beirut in Lebanon. And while getting a haircut at this guy's shop, he asked me where I was from. And I did finally answer, I'm German. Well, they had fled from Syria and his brother had fled to Germany instead. And already learned the language. So he insisted on immediately calling his brother on FaceTime in Germany so I could speak with him. As I still couldn't speak German, I was very nervous about being busted. But the brother was actually very nice and thought it was pretty funny in the end. I began planning a bigger German party for my one year anniversary of getting my first passport. 
My German anniversary. I went online to buy some decorations for the party. First a big German flag, but then I would have to decide whether to get the flag with the eagle or not. So I got both. And why not get 40 extra big flags, just in case. And a pile of flags and sticks is necessary too. I also found a lot of must-haves, such as German glasses, the stuff to paint German flags in your face, and these things. And of course also 99 balloons. I bought some German beer and some more sauerkraut so I'd be able to provide at least a kilogram per guest. I decided to get 100 pictures printed of famous German people, but I didn't really know anyone else than Merkel, so I just got 100 of her. Honestly, I might have spent a bit too much in this party, but it was all worth it. I prepared an amazing playlist with the best hits of Nina, Kraftwerk and Hanti Hinsesir. Yeah, I have since heard he's Austrian and he has of course been replaced now on my playlist by Helene Fischer. Anyway, I ordered the flags well in advance, but a few days before the party they had still not arrived. I was really worried they wouldn't get here in time, so I went out and bought some discarded sewing fabric and turned my grandparents' house into a small flag factory, where I sewed them myself with Bettina. A great test of a girlfriend is if she's willing to spend all night helping you sew German flags. 10 out of 10 for Bettina in this case. The flags I ordered didn't arrive, but I'm still very happy with how the party turned out. And two weeks after the party, the flags did actually arrive. When I would travel, I'd mostly just use my German passport, which resulted in a couple of people giving me compliments of how good my Danish was. Instead of correcting anybody and saying it was my first language, I just took the compliments and said thank you. Around Christmas time, I took a ferry to Rostock to see a Christmas market. My plan was to show Bettina my homeland and share my culture with her. We had some blue wine with fire and just walked around seeing the market for an afternoon. Don't worry, being German didn't make me forget who I was. When traveling to Hong Kong with Bettina, there was a special queue where I could skip the line for migration by just being German. Of course, I considered it, but I decided staying with and keeping my girlfriend was much more important than saving 25 minutes. When showing my passport, some people often hit me with some German, so I always give a polite good talk back. One girl I met in Egypt kept asking me how to say stuff in German, and after I countless times said I don't know and she didn't believe me, I gave up. And I'm really not proud about this, but I made up a couple of words, such as geschnacken, to mean talking. So, to my fellow Germans, if you meet this Egyptian girl, please pretend the words she's using are real. I continued the tradition of throwing German anniversaries, and with all the flags that didn't arrive in time for the last one, I now had a lot. And I bought some more flags and some extra balloons. I, by the way, thought Uganda's flag fit way too well to not include it. For this party, I invited about 60 people to my apartment. It was fun. We had a quiz about the world's countries, with questions such as which country won the most Winter Olympic medals, who's the largest rye producer, or government with the highest budget surplus. Spoiler, Germany was the right answer to every single question. My guests seemed very impressed by my efforts. I had met a couple of German people here in Copenhagen, who I of course also invited. They were the only ones who did not want to paint their faces with German flags, and were a bit more reluctant regarding my blatant display of nationalism. Turns out that Germans have a bit of a strained relationship with their flag, and are not exactly comfortable with having it all over the place. It was an important lesson. I realized I'd been completely wrong. Being German was not about having the most flags. It was just about being punctual and driving fast on the autobahn. To be clear, the next anniversary was celebrated without any flags. This was also during the pandemic by the way, so I just sat alone and ate sauerkraut. Another thing I learned from the real Germans, and this sounds like a dumb joke, but they told me I was not supposed to eat the sauerkraut cold. Nobody had ever told me it should be heated. It made it slightly better. During this time I actually got a bit more comfortable with the German language. I'd say sentences such as Wie viel kostet ein halbes Kilo Kartoffeln? After all, Danish is not too far from German. For example, we even shared a word for dog. My big achievement was when I was finally able to read some of the literature. Sure, I don't understand the most complicated stuff yet, such as Goethe or Nietzsche in German, but I'm able to read some of the other great German poetry. Such as this famous poem. Here he's saying he is uh, snobby, the small crocodile. He is um, from Egypt, on the Nile. First he was in an egg, but then he snapped himself free. And I don't think this part is real words. I also noted how good of a German I had become when I was able to correctly identify 13 out of 16 Bundeslander in this online quiz. This summer I decided, as a German, it was important that I had seen the parliament of my country, the so-called Bundestag. So I traveled back to Berlin, which was a lot of fun. This guy gave a tour, I saw the former division between East and West Berlin, and I had my first currywurst. 
In the next World Cup, France won. So I briefly looked up French nationality law, but decided even I have my limits. Germany was kicked out early in the group stage by a loss to South Korea. And Danish citizens were giving the same visa freedom, so all the initial benefits were gone. But I was still happy about being German. Though the stuff with nationality was pretty easy in my case, it is of course not always like that. There was a big contrast in having people in my life that were born here in Denmark, spoke Danish as their first language, were mostly unable to travel and still had decades long struggle of getting a Danish citizenship. So all jokes aside, I am really grateful for it. I guess the last thing to do now that I'm publicly German is to go and update my profile picture to a German flag. By the way, my Instagram is Spaghetti Road Official if you want to follow me. Thank you very much for watching. No, no. Sehr vielen Dank für Zuschauer. If you want to support the channel, feel free to subscribe. As a German, I'll of course run this channel in the future without humor or jokes anymore. You can also grab a shirt at SpaghettiRoad.com. A design with the German flag is already available and I was actually gonna wear it myself, but per suggestion from a German friend, it would be a much more German design without the German flag. So instead I have added the EU flag, which I'll be able to wear without looking like a crazy nationalist. A big thank you to all my Patreons, listed here on screen. Your support helps fund this channel and is greatly appreciated. All the best, thank you.